water, earth, fire, air. A hundred years pass, and my brother and I discovered the new avatar, an airbender named Aang. And although he has a lot to learn, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. Damn it! Ooh, is it another love episode? Those are my favorite. We've got a lot of ground to cover if we want to make it to Omashu today. What, like you're ready to go right now, naked guy? I can be ready in two minutes. Oh my god, I have the exact same conversation with my girlfriend every time. But I was ready though, I was ready. And I can get ready fast. If you move them closer together, you protect your center. You got it? Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and they have a romance. I forgot amidst all the death. You make a fine octopus, pupil Aang. You know what's kind of weird about that? Is that when you are a teacher, it changes the dynamic in a way that also might affect the romance. For Aang, that might deepen his attraction to Katara, but for Katara, it might lessen her attraction towards Aang, just from experience. Don't fall in love with the traveling girl. That's good advice. Don't fall in love while traveling. I'm Chow, and this is my wife, Lily. We're nomads. Happy to go? Nomads from the 1970s. You guys are nomads? I'm a nomad. Hey, me too. I me too. Know. What are you doing? I like their new haircuts. You're looking at the rare white dragon bush. Its leaves make a tea so delicious. That? Oh, it's the white jade bush, which is poisonous. You've got to focus less on the where and more on the going. Oh. Ma. Shoo. Sokka's right. We need yes, to find King Bumi so Aang can learn earthbending somewhere safe. Right. Well, sounds like you're headed to Omashu. There's an old story. <laughs> Uh-oh. Are they going to be in this whole episode? <laughs> No, we don't need to do that. I'm with Sokka. I mean, the songs aren't bad. It's just not. I mean, that guy's really good, but what were the other two people doing? They had nothing. <laughs> Remember that plant I thought might be tea? It wasn't. I will stop breathing. But look what I found! These are Pakui berries. Known to cure the poison of the white jade plant. Okay. That or makaole berries that cause blindness. If the Earth Kingdom discovers us, they'll have us killed. But if the Fire Nation discovers us, we'll be turned over to Azula. Earth Kingdom it is. Mm -hmm. One great way to build a villain is when people you know to be powerful are afraid of them. I'm gonna make a map to keep track of exactly where we've been. Yeah, that's how you- that's good thinking. We know better than to touch the white jade. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> so where are you traveling from? Of course we have names. Lucy and Junior, huh? My name is Song. This is a cute scene, I like this. You two look like you could use a good meal. A lot of nice little touches. I like how Uncle Iroh keeps scratching himself. That's too bad. My mom always makes too much roast duck. Where do you live exactly? <laughs> he knows what's important. The Fire Nation raided our farming village. That was the last time I saw my father. Hmm. I haven't seen my father in many years. I'm much more interested in the Zuko side of the story than the Aang side of the story. Just because this is some pretty serious char character building for him in a way. Because not only is he living like a commoner, which is something new for him, he also is getting first-hand accounts of what his nation did to people. And he's getting it from somebody who is being really kind to him. That's a lot for him to think about. That's a really nice touch by the writers having him be on the run, because it forces him to live at that local level where he has to see the aftermath of the war. Oh, they get separated? Oh, yeah. We're separated, but at least you have us. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough. I know what you've been through. We've all been through it. Fire Nation has hurt you. Wow. It's okay. They've hurt me too. That scene was very short, but there was so much going on there. So the first thing I'm thinking about for that scene is the fact that it's really hard to accept someone's love or a loving gesture if you haven't accepted yourself. And that scar is a crazy thing for Zuko because it is a physical representation of something he really wants to forget. And the fact that she raises her hand to touch it brings it into super heightened focus in a way that you can't ignore it. But she's doing that as a loving gesture. So it's this really weird clash of feelings at the same time. She's giving him acceptance for something he can't accept. It seemed like on some level he recognized that as a nice gesture. If you have something that you're self-conscious about, you're worried people will bring it up, but it's also kind of scary if people don't bring it up because it want, you wonder if they're thinking about it secretly. And so when someone does bring it up, but they do it nicely, in a way that's the best of all worlds because at least you know where you stand with it. Does that make sense? So it's, it's a very 
visceral moment there. And what's great about it is he's bonding with someone who is on the opposite side as him, but who's the same as him. They both lost their fathers in a sense. They've both been burned, literally and metaphorically. Really, it's sometimes it's the littlest things that do the most. It's definitely not these guys. I feel bad not liking them. I feel like I should like them. I'm interested to hear what you guys think about this group. What was your first reaction to them? I feel like in some way this is representative of a trait that's bad in me. It's like the worst part of Sokka. I, I share that. So I'm wondering if I'm alone in this or if other people have the same experience. Oh, it's always interesting when they switch art styles. They met on top of the mountain that divided their two villages. The two lovers learned earthbending from the badger moles. They became the first earthbenders. Mm. I'm liking these origin stories for the benders. They're pretty cool. Although I think the, the moon story is a little bit cooler. But one day the man didn't come. Devastated, the woman unleashed a terrible display of her earthbending power. Both villages helped her build a new city where they would live together. The woman's name was Oma and the man's name was Shu. Oma oh, Shu. Oh, I thought he was going to kiss her for a second. Love <laughs> is brightest in the dark. What if we kissed? Us kissing? See, it mm. was a crazy idea. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I definitely wouldn't want to kiss you. Oh no. <laughs> well, I didn't realize it was such a horrible option. If it was a choice between kissing you and dying... <laughs> Taking that aloof thing a little bit too seriously. I know you don't think there's any hope left in the world, but there is hope. These people just showed oh, no. you great kindness. Don't do it. Well... Man, Uncle Iroh needs to put his foot down once in a while. Oh no. That's so disheartening. I think one of the most evil things you could possibly do is to mistreat people who are kind to you. Because what you're doing is basically punishing the few good people that are in the world that give unselfishly. It seems like one of the best ways to just make things worse. That was sad. Here we go. What is Zuko gonna think? <laughs> Oh, it's the earthbending badger moles. The big bad badger moles who earthbend the tunnels hate the wolf bats but love the sounds. I can't get over how like three of them are good at music and the other two just wave their arms in the air. <laughs> so, um, so what does this go. mean for our relationship? <laughs> That's ambiguous. Why is your forehead all red? Nobody react to what I'm about to tell you. I think that kid might be the avatar. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I hope you learned a little something about not letting the plants get in the way of the journey. Even if you're lost, you can't lose the love because that's in your heart. Uh, now I feel a little bit bad being so hard on them. Okay, wait, the wait. Journey I'm okay with those people, but I don't want to rely on them. I feel like I have to explain myself. <laughs> I feel kind of bad. I feel guilty. I let some bad qualities come out. You can hang out with them. You don't want to need them for anything. You don't want to be stuck with them in a cave. That's probably what it is, okay? Uh, that justifies my negativity, all right? Let's just move on. I present to you the Earth Kingdom city of O- Oh no. Oh no, wow. Cliffhanger. I really enjoyed the Zuko segment. Even though it was short, I feel like there was a lot there. And also we advanced the romance plot a little bit. That kind of shot the first hole into my Zuko Katara theory, but it's not over yet. We got a lot of show left. Anything could happen. I'm going in to find Boomy. Yeah. Aang, stop. There are other people who can teach you earthbending. This isn't about finding a teacher. Yeah. This is about finding my friend. I'm glad we had that introduction to Boomy earlier because it means more to us now. It's time to visit some old friends. Azula! It is so good to see you. Certainly our parents didn't send us to the Royal Fire Academy for girls to end up in places like this. It's interesting to see her in this light. Just the fact that she has friends totally changes the color of her character. And the fact that this girl seems really friendly also suggests there must be some good to Azula. I think maybe I'm just wishing for that just because that's more interesting. And we kind of had that precedent because of Zuko. Although maybe the friend turns out to be a ruthless villain. But who knows? I wouldn't want you to give up the life you love just to please me. Of course, before I leave, I'm going to catch your show. <gasps> So, is King Boomy with you guys? Before we even had a chance, King Boomy surrendered. I don't know anything about the situation, and I don't know what Boomy actually has in mind. But one thing I can say instinctually just from seeing this is, I feel like people place too much faith in leaders to take action. It's something I see more and more. People look to a certain figurehead and either credit that person 
for all the good they see or discredit them for all the bad they see. It doesn't seem like there's much nuance in thinking about a leader's responsibility. In fact, sometimes the best thing a leader could do is do nothing, but we often get lost in the symbolic value of, of what a leader should be. We want them to solve everything for us all the time. But I think the problem with that is sometimes when you take action suddenly and impulsively without getting all the information first or without considering things carefully, you end up overlooking some key consequence, some unintended effect of whatever big move you make that affects everyone. Whereas it might have been better in certain situations to just let the problem take care of itself. It's very tricky. It's hard to know the difference. I think that's one of the challenges of leadership. But I think it's a mistake in leadership to always have to take action, to always feel like you must do something as a leader, because I think often that ends up doing more harm than it, than it prevents. On the other side of that, on the citizen side, I think it's a mistake to always look to leaders to solve every problem. I think that problems should always try to be solved first locally and independently. Either way, I'm confident that there's more to the situation than meets the eye. It doesn't matter now. Fighting the Fire Nation is the only path to freedom. And freedom is worth dying for. We can leave Almasha. They've taken our home, and we have to fight them at any cost. Mm. This is something that's really common. People think in binary terms. It's like either I get this or I get this. When the truth is, often there are many paths to get there. It's just that those paths require sacrifice. And I think some people miss that element. They think they're gonna get exactly what they want without sacrificing. And that leads them into this very narrow choice that's almost impossible to win. I've thought about this a lot in, re in regards to work. I'm from New York City, and I've seen a lot of people kind of stuck working jobs that didn't quite support their standard of living. And so I've suggested doing what I do, which is teaching English in other countries. Because even though the salary there is not high for New York standards, the cost of living is really low and you also often get your apartments provided. And so it's a great way to save money and a great way to be a little bit more financially liberated. But people I talk to about that, usually the response is, well, I don't want to leave New York, which is valid. I mean, I'm not saying people need to make the exact same sacrifices I've made, but I think that that kind of thinking, I want this, but I'm not willing to sacrifice anything, is a common thing I see with people. And I mean, I do that too. Sometimes I want something and someone will make a suggestion to me. And I realize that actually is a viable suggestion, but I'm just not willing to make a concession in certain areas. It should be a choice that's made deliberately and consciously after significant reflection on what actually is valuable to you not just a default to this is the way things are and so that's the way i want things to stay that's a really good way to put blinders on to all the possibilities out there for you Flopsy. oh yeah i remember i remember flopsy some creative water bending yep, yep. Oh. wrong animal let's go good thing he speaks english Oops. Do you think she'll fall? Of course not. Then wouldn't it make it more interesting <laughs> if you remove the net? Set the net on fire. So that's why she was so concerned. What kind of dangerous animals do you have? Well, our circus boasts the most exotic assortment. Of Release them all! <laughs> I kind of want to hang out with her. It seems fun. She seems like the kind of person that it would be great to drink with for one night and then never see again. We've got a problem. We just did a head count. You got a lot of problems, dude. Oh no. Did someone get left behind? We have an extra. <laughs> the universe is giving me strong hints that it's time for a career change. Oh, was that her plan? To scare her out of the circus? That was elaborate. He wants to make a trade. His son for King Boomy. It's great to see you, man. More friends. And I need you both. Count me in. This is so interesting. I can't see them as villains if they're just friends. It's like the sisterhood of the traveling fire pants. <laughs> That's not a criticism, by the way. I'm glad that they're human. This could be a really cool setup to make these girls just super ruthless later, but it does seem like they have some heart. Hmm. May will handle the hostage trade so you don't have a chance to mess it up. And there is no more Omashu. I'm renaming it the city of New Ozai. And right after we learned all that history for the city too. So this is Aang's first meeting with Azula, right? Oh, there's Bumi. You brought my brother? We're trading a two-year-old for a king. It just doesn't seem like a fair trade. The deal's off. Nice. Oops. The Avatar. Her fire is interesting. Wow, with the water. <laughs> I like how Katara is fighting both of them at the same time. nice touch that they ended up on the slide again. We're getting a lot of mileage out of this thing, yeah. I'm 
What's your paralyzer? How are you gonna fight without your bending? Ah! I seem to manage. Hey, he's doing something. That's good. Ah! Oh yeah, Appa, the most deadly of all. Ah! Thanks, Boomy. You could earth bend. They didn't go in my face. Why did you surrender when Omashu was invaded? There are options in fighting called Jing. There's positive Jing when you're attacking and negative Jing when you're retreating. And neutral Jing. When you do, nothing. It involves listening and waiting. So I don't know anything about Jin's, but yeah, that is an option. You don't always have to do something. It's true in terms of personal problems too, right? Like a lot of times you, when you encounter difficulty, people will say that time will take care of it. That's always annoying to hear, but it's also often right. New days bring new information. And a lot of times the new information completely changes the perspective on whatever the problem is. That's a nice lesson for Ang to learn too. I'm sure that'll come in useful for him at some point. Your teacher will be someone who has mastered neutral G. You need to find someone who waits and listen. So we're tracking down your brother and uncle, huh? It'll be interesting seeing Zuko again, won't it, May? Mm. It's not just Zuko and Iroh anymore. So are they suggesting that at one point the three of them were hunting Zuko? Hmm. My two favorite things about that episode were seeing Azula with friends. I can't see her the same anymore. And also I love the thing about Bumi waiting, the neutral Jin. I'm guessing the next episode will start in Omashu or New Ozai City. So I guess I'll see you then for episode four.